First one goes to dansavageorlandomagic.com. Cliff, I know you guys aspire for more, but your group has the opportunity to earn its way into the postseason for the second straight year tonight. You know, what, is, what does that mean to, to you guys and, and to the franchise? Uh, you know, first, before I answer your uh, question, I want to uh, go back to, uh, we spoke a little bit the other day about the uh, history of racial injustice calendar that uh, Brian Stevenson forward to all of us. And on this day in 1930, over 10,000 uh, white people in a mob lynched two black men in Marion, Indiana. And if you look on the internet, under the calendar, actually, there's a picture uh, of the mob. And even though there were, there were phot photographs available, uh, no one was ever convicted of the killing. So again, I would urge people uh, as we all educate ourselves on our history and as we unite to fight against racial just, uh, for racial justice, to take some time to look at some of the things that have happened uh, in our past. Um, in terms of making the playoffs, it would be, you know, it would be a good year for us. And uh, when we started the season, our goal was to uh, do two things, make qualify for the playoffs and be playing in a manner where we could be a factor. And, you know, we're shorthanded right now, but we're going to have guys coming back. Uh, we've actually done some good things in these last two games. And uh, I think that this can set up if we have the right approach, which we've had so far where, you know, as we, you know, hopefully win one more game or the Wizards lose one more game so that we're in so that we'll be playing well. Josh Robbins. Steve, you mentioned you're going to have guys coming back. How are MCW and Aaron? Well, they're day to day and, uh, you know, they're both diligent guys and professional and they want to be on the floor. So, uh, you know, I just met with David for a while and he said, you know, they both, you know, they both had good days today with their treatment and everything. And uh, they did some extra work. So we'll see how they feel tomorrow. Roy Perry. Yes, Steve, you know, sort of just, uh, you know, looking ahead, looking ahead with AG, you know, obviously, you know, he needs time to heal, but you don't want to, you know, let him get rusty by sitting too long. So what, what's kind of the approach in bringing him back and, and sort of how much will that approach be affected by a, a potential playoff series that you guys have? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of that, Roy, as you know, that's, that's why um, we have such a, a good performance group. And, um, you know, I don't, I, you know, know a lot about the medical side of things. They do. Um, you know, he wants to be back. They want him back. And it's the same thing. I mean, you know, he does treatment or rehab like he did today. And then they evaluate where he's at. And, um, you know, hopefully he'll feel a lot better tomorrow uh, when he's ready to come back. Uh, you know, hopefully he'll be able to be back in time so that he can get out on the floor again before the playoffs start because he was playing at a really high level. Kendra Douglas, West 2. Hey, Coach, with the injury bug kind of making that impact on your team, how does that affect you guys tonight? And how does that affect you moving forward? Kind of talk a little bit about uh, your mindset, especially with everything going on and, and the opportunity to make playoffs. Yeah, we'll start Gary Clark tonight at the 4. Uh, you know, Philly is big and physical and they're a terrific rebounding team. So we want to get as much size on the floor as we can uh, for the majority of the game. We'll end up playing small games and so play some at the four also. Um, and in terms of going forward, I mean, uh, you know, obviously the priority would be if we could win tonight, then we're in and there'd be no play in. That was our goal, our initial goal in coming here. We didn't want to have to play our way in with an eight, nine game and the magic number for that is one. And then, you know, you, as a coach, you do the same thing with your staff that you do, I mean, every year, even in the playoffs is, you get up in the morning, who's available today, practice, game, whatever it is, and you try to have uh, meaningful days where you make progress. I'll go to Lucas from Brazil. Thank you. Hi, coach. Can you talk about Markel Fultz's improvement this year and what kind of player he can be for the Magic? 
Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I look back to 13 months ago. I spent some time just thinking about him today and where he's at. 13 months ago, Markel wasn't even shooting jump shots from the free throw line. Uh, he's put in a, a ton of uh, work uh, on his injuries that he had and on his game and on his conditioning. And I think that he's made progress much quicker uh, than any of us could have hoped for. Uh, He's obviously, he's a talented athlete. He has very high, high IQ uh, and he's fun to coach and he, you know, he's a winning player. So I think uh, as he continues to, you know, improve the injuries that he has and, and it has more time uh, to play in the NBA so he gets his rhythm back, I think he'll keep getting better and better. Back to Josh Robbins. Steve, uh, how far is Markel from rejoining the lineup, and how much of the decision you have to make is, is based on uh, the uh, not wanting to break up the pick and roll combo between Vooch and DJ? Yeah, um, no, I, I, you know, we, we want to get to certain groups, and we just haven't been able to do that because of a lot of factors, as you guys know. Um, you know, Markel's still on a little bit of a minute restriction, so he can play a little bit more tonight. Uh, and then we'll see going forward, you know, what we do. Um, you know, in a playoff series, you want to get the best playing groups you can on the floor and uh, get the best matchups you can on the floor. And there's ways that both Markel can, can – uh, you know, starting DJ can play with Vooch. I mean, DJ doesn't care if he starts to come off the bench, and Markel doesn't either. So, uh, you know, we'll just, again, day by day. But right now it's just hard to do. When guys are on minute restrictions, it's it makes the playing groups difficult. Roy Perry. Yes, Steve, when you guys played them earlier this year, I think, I think Shake Milton I played maybe nine minutes the first time. He didn't play at all the second time. And obviously he's become – a much bigger factor for them lately. So in, in what ways has his play affected that offense and how do you keep him from having a, a really big impact on tonight's game? Yeah, I mean, he just hit a huge three the other night against San Antonio. Uh, actually, if you go back to the second game, James Ennis played a lot for them in that game. Uh, but no, I mean, it starts in transition uh, with Shake Milton. You got to keep him out of the paint. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a pesky defender, um, uses his hands well. They're, they're very much in the passing lanes and uh, into the ball. And we, we must be low turnover tonight. He's a big part of that. Um, and then you have to get to him because, um, you know, he will make and he will take and make big shots. Dan Savage. If you know, Embiid's been playing well since the restart, even by his standards, um, you know, may even be a, more of a focal point of the offense with Simmons' injury. Uh, what are the stresses he puts on a, a defense, and, you know, how difficult does he make it out there for you? Well, yeah, I mean, you can't guard him with one guy, and it starts with, which is not easy, it's the screening action to bring him into the post or just, you know, the duckings, you know, misdirect, get your, get your guy to have to help. Uh, which opens up the paint for him to just use his great strength and explosiveness. So um, it's going to be a fight in there to not let him get the ball deep. When he gets it deep, he lives at the free throw line, plus he finishes. And every time you play against him, I would say free throw attempts uh, is a big stat. And uh, we're going to have to do our work tonight, you know, without the ball defensively, try to extend him out where at least then – we can do things with a second defender to uh, try to keep him off balance. Any other questions for Coach Clifford? Okay, thank you, everybody.